Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our weekly online Eucharist here at St. James Episcopal Church in Goshen, New York. Today is the first Sunday of the Lenten season. Because of the pandemic and the bishop limiting public worship, we will continue to have Sunday worship online into the early spring with a small congregation present here for videotaping. As people are vaccinated and the infection rate goes down, the hope is that at some point this year we will gradually return to regular numbers for public worship. I am anticipating in May to start worship outside again. In the meantime, I want you to be safe and join us online for worship. Included in my Sunday email is a prayer for spiritual communion for those of you at home who cannot partake in receiving the body and blood of Christ with us. So please join us now in the Holy Eucharist for this first Sunday in Lent. O God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God the Holy Ghost, Sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O Holy, Blessed, and Glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to perform. That may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. 
and it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, as good Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy, and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. And it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart, as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. And it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to forgive our enemy, enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to be down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you might to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as may come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and shall be a sign. It shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Then when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now say the appointed song. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and in you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimony. suffered for sins for all, and the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into baptism and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory.
according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Jesus' baptism has always been a problem for theologians and scripture scholars because John was baptizing people as a symbol of their repentance and forgiveness of sin and God's coming judgment on the world. Yet we are taught that Jesus was without sin. What did Jesus have to repent of? What's going on here? It's been suggested that people coming to be baptized were simply expressing their readiness for the promised kingdom of God. Their repentance and confession pertain to social sins, not innate personal ones, for which they had recourse through the temple rites. It was an omission that they had somehow participated in a system of oppression and injustice and that they were now ready to change in preparation for God's reign. Thus John's baptism then was a visible sign of this attitude. If that was the case, then it was natural for Jesus to identify with this understanding as a witness to his identity. In Luke's Gospel, after his baptism and temptation in the desert, Jesus begins his ministry with these words taken from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Here clearly, Jesus is witnessing to what his baptism was about and what his intentions are in initiating God's reign. Today's gospel passage ends with, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. At the time of Jesus, the Jewish people believed that prophecy had ceased with the last prophets, but that it would be restored at the end times. The heavens had closed, as it were, and there was no direct communication from God to humankind anymore. Mark says in today's Gospel that the heavens were torn apart in cosmic significance at Jesus' baptism, as a way of affirming Jesus' identity and the coming of God's Spirit at work. Here we have an absolutely revolutionary claim. The God of Israel is speaking again, and has chosen to do it through a humble peasant from Galilee. Now it's interesting that this Gospel passage is always read in Epiphany as a manifestation of Jesus' identity as God's Son, and God's voice proclaiming that. Today in Lent, the reason for reading this gospel is shifted to our identity. We know who Jesus is. It is our identity that is called into question today. 
In St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he points out that our identity as followers of Jesus is defined by our baptism. He writes, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Our baptism is for our salvation, our redemption, to set us free from the power of evil, sin, and death. This is what we are saved from in our dying with Christ. This is why our baptism matters. Just as Jesus' baptism pointed to his identity, our baptism and the living out of our baptismal promises points to our identity. St. Paul in Galatians furthers our identity by writing, As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Christ. Human divisions are a product of sin. We have witnessed a year in which many Christians have lost sight of our identity in Christ. When Christians are clearly racist, uncharitable towards the poor and the oppressed, and put political and social priorities ahead of the gospel, then we have lost our way. Any creating of division among people is the work of evil and needs to be identified as such. As Christians, we have a great deal to atone for in our hypocrisy and divisiveness. Unless the church in America is to be consigned to the ash heap of social history, we must identify actions that are hateful and unchristian, cast them out, and renew our work for justice, forgiveness, and unity. An important part of both this work or renewal and our baptismal identity is found in repentance and self-examination. In our baptismal covenant in the prayer book, we promise, we promise to persevere in resisting evil and whenever we fall into sin, to repent and return to the Lord. Today's gospel reminds us that sin is both personal and societal. God's kingdom is established in Christ to overcome all sin and to restore all the broken and damaged relationships between human beings and all of creation. Sin is the obstacle we place in our relationship with God and one another. Identifying that sin and removing that sin requires a lot of soul-searching and being honest with ourselves. We need to be honest enough to see our personal responsibility in social sins, such as racism, homophobia, sexism, classism, wealth and equality, and any host of things that divide us. It is only by serious self-examination with God's help that we can hope to match our identity with that of Christ. In baptism, we are saved from sin and death, but mostly, I believe, we are saved from ourselves. Saved from our own self-seeking, narcissistic tendency that separates us from our brothers and sisters and relegates us to a life of Christian hypocrisy. The 40 days of Lent should remind us that we ultimately don't want to be hypocrites. 
We have heard the good news of God in Christ and love of neighbor. And that truth draws at our heartstrings and inclines us to a life that is offered in our baptism. Even if we are so often led astray by our sins and brokenness. It's why we must always be about the act of repentance based on our interior reflection and prayer. And the good news in the state of our human propensity to sin is that we do see glimpses of God's power at work to transform us into the identity of Christ and in the lives of many men and women. For over 10 years now, we have had yearly fun with Lent Madness, begun by Tim Schneck and Scott Gunn as a Lenten devotion to teach us more about the lives of the saints. And while it's silly and humorous, the content found in reading of the lives of the saints is most moving and makes us hopeful that we can embrace and live into our identity in Christ. Those of you who have signed up to play Lent Madness have gotten this little booklet that comes out every year, and it's called the, the Saintly Scorecard. And if you go through it, it is short biographies of all the saints in Lent Madness, and they're really well written. And since this is also in February Black History Month, I thought I'd point out a couple of the saints found in this booklet. And so I point out Benedict the Moor, a black man, and of course a Franciscan. He devoted his life to healing and feeding the poor and the marginalized, even when those in authority over him questioned and restricted his actions. He also followed the example of St. Francis and kept seven 40-day fasts throughout the year. Talk about a champion of Lent. Or consider Henrietta de Lilly, a 19th century Creole woman and an American. Going against the norms of New Orleans society and the Jim Crow South, she dedicated her life to the poor of the city and teaching at a school for black girls, eventually founding the Order of Sisters of the Holy Family that ministered to the elderly and to orphans. Both of these saints lived out their baptismal promises by addressing societal sin and embodied in their actions the love and the compassion of Christ thereby transforming the world around them. That is what it is to conform our identity to Christ. To live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and was raised for us. Looking at the lives of the saints can inspire us to realize that following Christ and living out our baptism is possible. But like anything good or important, we have to work for it and at it all the time. Jesus has promised us the Holy Spirit to help us, but we need to make it our intention and priority. We need to take advantage of this Lenten season to reaffirm our identity in Christ. On Ash Wednesday, we were, we were reminded to use the tools of self-examination and repentance along with prayer, fasting, acts of self-denial, and reading and meditating on God's holy word in Lent. The way that God has structured salvation is that it's always up to us. It's our decision to choose or not to choose new life in Christ. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you to choose wisely. As baptized people who profess Christ as Savior, 
It is our responsibility to do the soul work that following Jesus requires. Even in the midst of this pandemic, embrace Lent. It does not need to be a dour season of sackcloth and ashes as it's sometimes projected as. Lent and this 40-day period can be an opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and one another. Because your life might just inspire others and reveal your identity in Christ. Amen. Together now we will proclaim our faith as it's found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace.
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed.
cleansed from all their sins. 